Welcome to our channel Learning Math. In this video, we're going to learn about midpoint theorem for grade 8. We have midpoint theorem for triangles and midpoint theorem for trapezoids. Let's start by midpoint theorem for triangles. Actually, if we have a triangle ABC as you see in the figure, and we have given I the midpoint of the segment AB and J the midpoint of the segment AC. Then the segment joining these midpoints I and J is said to be the mid-segment in this triangle. What happens to this mid-segment? Actually, IJ will be parallel to the third side in this triangle, which is here BC, and the length of IJ will be equal to half the length of BC. We say by midpoint theorem, IJ is parallel to BC and IJ is equal to BC over 2, it's half BC. Let's prove this theorem together. As you see in the figure, we have I is the midpoint of AB, J the midpoint of AC. Well, if we construct the symmetric of I with respect to J, uh, to J let's see what will happen. Now, as you see in the figure, we are having that J will be the midpoint of IK by symmetric and J is given the midpoint of AC. Well, what happens if we join the quadrilateral A, I, C, K? Let's see what will happen. Note that in this case, we have J is the midpoint of A, C and the midpoint of I, K. Can't we say that the diagonals A, C and I, K are bisecting each other at J? Therefore, we can say that the quadrilateral A, I, C, K is a parallelogram. It has... Uh, diagonals bisecting each other. Well, we have just proved that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Can't we deduce in a parallelogram that the opposite sides will be equal and parallel? Therefore, we can say that AI and KC are equal and parallel. They are the opposite sides of the parallelogram AICK. But if you know something, we have the points A, I, and B are collinear. Well, also we have I given the midpoint of the segment AB. Now, can't we say in this case that AI is equal to IB and they are the same straight line? So we can conclude that CK is parallel and equal to IB. Can't we say these two opposite sides are then equal and parallel? Well, when we have opposite sides are equal and parallel, what should we have? Isn't it a parallelogram? Therefore, we can say that I, B, C, K is a parallelogram. It has two opposite sides that are equal and parallel. Well, something else. We have just proved another parallelogram. Now, can't we deduce that it also has two opposite sides that are equal and parallel? Now, can't we say that B, C and I, K are equal and parallel? Well, now we have proved that the two opposite sides, B, C and I, K are equal and parallel. They are the opposite sides of the parallelogram. Can't we deduce that I, J is parallel to B, C since I, J and K are collinear by symmetry? Well, something else. We have J is the midpoint of I, K by symmetry. Now we can say that IJ is equal to half IK, but IK is equal to BC. Therefore, can't we deduce that IJ is equal to half BC? This is the midpoint theorem, so we can say that in triangles, by midpoint theorem, the segment joining two midpoints will be parallel to the third side in this triangle, and its length will be equal to half the length of this side. Now, what about the converse of midpoint theorem? It's very important. First of all, we need to learn something. When do we use midpoint theorem and when do we use the converse of midpoint theorem? Actually, we use midpoint theorem to prove that, for example, IJ is parallel to BC when we need to prove them parallel. Also, we can use midpoint theorem to find the length of IJ if the length of BC is given, or the contrary, if the length of BC is given, we can find the length of IJ. For example, if we have BC is equal 10 cm, then IJ by midpoint theorem will be half BC, so its length will be 5. 
The contrary, if we have the length of IJ is 3 cm, then the length of BC will be double the length of IJ, so it will be 6 cm. So we can apply midpoint theorem either to prove that the mid, -seg uh, the mid segment is parallel to the base or to find the length of the mid segment or find the length of the base. Now let's learn about the converse of midpoint theory. If we have a triangle ABC, but we have given one and only one midpoint, I, the midpoint of the segment AB. But from this midpoint exactly, we have a straight line issued parallel to the base BC. What will happen in this case? By converse of midpoint theorem, we can say that J will be then the midpoint of the side or the segment AC. So by converse of midpoint theorem, if we have one midpoint and parallel issued from this midpoint, it will cut the second side at its midpoint exactly. Let's prove converse of midpoint theorem together. By the same method, if we construct the symmetric of I with respect to J, what will happen in this case? If you know something, we have given IJ parallel to BC. Then, IJ and K are collinear by symmetry. Here we can say that IK is parallel to BC. And we have given IJ equals half BC. Also, J is the midpoint of IK by symmetry. We can say that IJ is half IK. Well, in this case, we have IK and BC are equal to each other. They have the same length and also they are parallel to each other. Well, now we are having two opposite sides that are equal and parallel. Can't we say that we will have a parallelogram? It will have two opposite sides that are equal and parallel. Also, we can deduce in this case that the opposite sides, the other opposite sides, will be equal and parallel. So we can conclude that IB and KC will be parallel and equal as opposite sides of the parallelogram IBCK. But note that I is given midpoint of AB. Now, can't we say that B, I, and A are collinear and also IB is equal to IA? Well, in this case, what will happen? We can say that BI and IA are equal. Then we can deduce that CK is parallel and equal to IA. Now we have other opposite sides that are equal and parallel to each other. Don't they form for us a parallelogram? So we can say that A, I, C, K is a parallelogram. It has two opposite sides that are equal and parallel. Well, now we have proved a parallelogram. Can't we deduce that its diagonals bisect each other? Therefore, the point J, the meeting of the diagonals IK and AC, it will be at the same time the midpoint of IK and the midpoint of AC. It's given the midpoint of IK, it will be then the midpoint of AC. Therefore, by converse of midpoint theorem, when we have a midpoint, and we have a parallel issued from this midpoint such that IJ is equal to half BC, then J will be exactly the midpoint of the site AC, the segment AC. Now let's start by midpoint theorem for trapezoids. First of all, what's the meaning of a trapezoid? Actually, the trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has two opposite sides parallel to each other. They are said to be the bases. Now, what about the midpoint theorem in trapezoids? Actually, in trapezoids, if we have the midpoints of the non-parallel sides, the segment joining these midpoints is said to be the mid-segment. It will be parallel to the two bases, AB and CD, and its length, EF, will be equal to the length of AB plus the length of CD all over 2. Well, something else. The mid-segment in a trapezoid, if we join the diagonals B, D, and A, C, this mid-segment will bisect the two diagonals. It will cut them at their midpoints. Let's see something together. Here, as you see, we have a trapezoid A, B, C, D. We have the parallel uh, bases A, B, and C, D. 
Now we will draw the diagonal. We can draw one of the two diagonals. It's enough. As you see, when we join the diagonal A, C, what will happen? This mid segment cuts the diagonal A, C at its midpoint. If you know something, now we can have two triangles. We have the triangle. As you see, we have the triangle A, C, D, the lower triangle, and we have the upper triangle A, B, C. What are we having in each of these triangles? In triangle A, D, C, we have E is the midpoint of A, D. And we have also G is the midpoint of the diagonal A, C. Now, can't we apply midpoint theorem for triangles? Here we can say that E, G is parallel to C, D, and E, G equals half C, D. Well, what happens if we also apply midpoint theorem in the upper triangle, which is A, B, C? If you know something, if we talk about triangle, sorry, A, B, C, we have F the midpoint of B, C given, and G the midpoint of the diagonal A, C, since the mid segment cuts the diagonal at its midpoint. Now, can't we apply midpoint theorem also in triangle A, B, C? Well, here we can say that GF will be parallel to AB, and also GF is equal to half AB. Well, we have E, G, and F collinear. EG is, uh, sorry, EF is then parallel to CD and also parallel to AB. And also, if we talk about the lengths, we can say that EF is equal to EG plus GF. EG is half CD and GF is half AB. So we can say that EF is equal to half CD plus half AB. Therefore, we can deduce that the length of the mid-segment EF in this trapezoid is equal to AB plus CD over 2. We will learn more about trapezoids. We can have any trapezoid that has two non-parallel uh, sides that are not equal, but it has two parallel sides that are called the bases. We can also have, as you see in the figure, a right trapezoid that has the parallel sides that are said to be the bases and also two right angles. Midpoint theorem for trapezoids is applied in all uh, kinds of trapezoids. Also, we can have an isosceles trapezoid that has the non-parallel sides are equal to each other. And it also has the bases, uh, sorry, the base angles on each base are equal to each other. As you see in the figure, they are indicated equal to each other. Uh, something else in an isosceles trapezoid, we can have the diagonals are equal to each other, but sure the diagonals in any trapezoid do not bisect each other. If they bisect each other, then uh, they, we will get a parallelogram and not a trapezoid. Also, midpoint theorem is applied the same for an isosceles trapezoid. In the next video, we're going to solve some exercises about midpoint theorem for triangles and trapezoids. Now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for the continuity of our channel to support you by more and more information. With a great appreciation for your support, thank you all.